Hi, I'm Callie from CRK Training Blog, and in today's video, we're back for another interview. I'm here on the Penn State campus with Dr. Ed Jedrodeski, and he is the horse farm manager here at Penn State, um, and he's given us the opportunity to share with you a little bit of his knowledge about equine parasites and deworming, fecal testing, um, and kind of what we need to be concerned about and what we need to be doing for our horses. So I guess first, thanks for letting us come out here. I'm glad you could come. Um, I guess we'll start off with, actually we were talking a little bit before we started, but what kind of got you interested in parasites and deworming for horses? Well, when I first came, we were always doing the parasite control process just like everybody does. Deworm every eight weeks, rotate your dewormers and we thought we were doing a really good job with the horses. And we had a colicky yearling that when we did a fecal exam, which is something that I routinely do with colic, his parasite load was extremely high and I couldn't figure out what was going on. And so we started doing more routine fecals and found out that our deworming program wasn't working as well as we thought. We had a high school student do a, a, just a project looking at the uh, uh, how effective the dewormer was and we had no effect whatsoever so basically we had resistance and so in doing some research I came across an article that um, talked about this targeted deworming and the development of resistance and I thought that's an awful lot of work I'm not sure I really want to get into that so I kind of just set it aside and then my conscience kind of bothered me after that and in about two years later, I started this targeted deworming process, and I think we've improved our deworming a lot since then, our parasite control proj yeah. process. Yeah, and you were saying, what was this, the statistic of how much you've reduced the actual amount of dewormers you're giving? We've de decreased the amount of dewormer about 80% yeah. that we're using. Yeah, that's definitely pretty cool. Um, well, I guess kind of the, and actually, maybe we should clarify first, how many horses are you kind of managing here at the farm, and what types? We're managing about 75 quarter horses, and they're all ages from pregnant brood mares to weanlings to yearlings, and then we sell most of them as two years of age. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I guess just a first kind of general question, why do we need to worry about parasites for horses? Um, probably you don't need to worry about them as much as you might think. Um, gastrointestinal parasites are significant. They can cause significant health issues. But there are also parasites can't live without the horse. So their goal is really not to kill the horse, it's to live off the horse. So in large numbers, they're a hindrance, but in smaller numbers, they're not a hindrance to the horse and they can actually be helpful. Mm -hmm. They can actually stimulate the horse's immune system and allow it to not develop larger loads okay. of parasites. Yeah. So we need to keep them healthy, but the goal is not to uh, have zero parasites. The goal is to have the horses be healthy. Mm -hmm. All right, I guess it, kind of the next question then, what should our process be as far as either managing the numbers, doing the fecal testings, like where do we start with all that? Probably the biggest thing you need to figure out is, is what parasites you have, what parasites you need to control, um, because it depends on the age of the horse, the management of the farm, and then do you have any resistance to the dewormers? Um, nowadays it's becoming very prevalent to have resistance. Uh, that project that we're working on here in Pennsylvania, for this year, we're finding that most of the farms that we've worked with in Pennsylvania have uh, or, um, benzimidazole resistance. Mm -hmm. Majority of them have pyrantel resistance, so we're down to just ivermectin. And so we need to guard that and, and we need to find that out because if you're deworming your horse with something that the parasites are resistance to, resistant to, you're doing absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. And how does the resistance start to occur? It's a genetic mutation in the parasite. Okay. Um, you know, every animal is trying to survive so they're constantly mutating and when they have a genetic mutation that allows them to survive the dewormer, mm -hmm. those are the ones that are left that are going to start um, reproducing again, and then you're going to have a larger and larger population as time goes by of resistant parasites. Okay. I guess, so with that fecal test, um, who should we get to do our fecal test, and then how often should we be doing them? It would be best to involve your veterinarian. Mm -hmm. um, 
And how often? That's a really tough question. You need to go through a se series of steps initially, and then they can kind of help you decide. Because one, you've got to think about the age of your horse. Younger horses are more susceptible to more types of parasites than the older horses. Um, when you're talking about small strongyles, which is the number one parasite of horses, adult horses, horses over three to four years of age, have varying levels of immunity, just like people have varying levels of immunity to getting sick. And so if you have a horse that has a low immunity that tends to develop a large population of small strongyles, you need to do more fecals. If you have a horse that has a very um, strong immunity, develops very low levels of small strongyles, you don't need to do fecals very often at all because unless something changes in their health uh, or in their management, significantly in their management, um, they're going to stay what they are. So a low shedder is going to be a low shedder its entire life. A high shedder is going to be a high shedder its entire life. Okay. So it's starting to kind of develop like a personalized plan? Exactly. Okay. Um, you can't have a generic uh, cookbook type formula anymore. You really need to figure out each individual horse yeah. and each individual farm. Okay. Now. How, I guess, do you have any suggestions for people that have a larger number of horses or like, you know, for you here at your farm where you've got a very large number of horses, how do you kind of manage that personalized or unique plan to the, I guess, to the best extent? You would have to go by age group to start with. Okay. Um, and we do more fecals than we need because mm -hmm. we have the students to do it. It's kind of a learning process. But once you figure out climate, um, during the spring and fall are the ideal times for parasite um, transmission because you need moderate temperatures and moisture. If you have a wet summer in Pennsylvania, then you're going to need more control. If you have a really dry summer, there's less um, transmission, same thing in the winter. So you could start narrowing it down. You figure, figure out your high shedders, figure out which horses have resistance, then you can narrow it down and you could probably get down to, you know, probably on your high shedders, two fecals twice a year. Okay. So two in the spring and two in the fall. Yeah. Um, but it's a matter of coming and figuring it all out, which takes a little bit more work. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess my final question is, <clears throat> what, do we, what are some signs that we might see in a horse that we know or that could kind of you know, advise us that that horse might have a high parasite load or that we definitely need to be concerned for that particular horse? In general, there aren't any signs. Okay. Um, in well-managed horses that are well taken care of, they can live with a relatively large parasite load. Mm -hmm. um, so there's not typically, you're not going to see a, a lot of signs of it other than doing a fecal. Yeah. Sure, you have all the classics, you know, if it's a really poorly cared for horse, thin, losing weight, diarrhea, those kinds of things. Yeah. But, majority of horses are going to have no signs other than a fecal exam. Okay. So I guess the kind of the big message is to be aware of it, do the fecal tests and go from there with the veterinarian's advice. Exactly. Figure out, you know, which horses are shedding what, figure out what resistance you have on your farm so you're not using worthless products. Um, not that the products are not being made well, it's just they're no longer working on your farm. Yeah. And then kind of tailor a program to your farm. Um, because parasites have to be transmitted on pasture. So if you have all stalled horses, that's a different management program or on a dry lot or something like that versus horses out on pasture. Yeah. So it's a very, there's a lot of factors to, to figure into yeah. it. Okay, cool. I guess that's, um pretty much the basic questions. Is there anything else that we definitely need to know or does that sum it up for the? Well, I think probably the final thing I would say, and we've kind of alluded to it, is, is that you know, for the last 50 years, our goal is to be to keep the horses parasite free. Mm -hmm. And really in 50 years, with all the research and all the treatments that have been done, that hasn't occurred. Mm -hmm. um, even the numbers and types of parasites have changed a little bit with deworming, but not a lot. Yeah. So instead of our goal being zero parasites in our horse, our goal needs to be deal with resistance, mm -hmm. because now that we've developed resistance, and keep the horses healthy. Mm -hmm. 
um, you know, because basically the biggest change in the last 50 years of deworming is 50 years ago there was no resistance and now there is to the yeah. dewormers. Um, so deal with the resistance and keep the horses healthy is the major thing and not have zero parasites as your goal. Mm -hmm. Interesting, yeah, that's definitely a different, kind of a different approach. Right? Yes, a lot of people would say that's yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah, a different way of thinking about it, but it does, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, well thank you very much again for your time and um, we'd love to hear from, actually hear from you in the comments. I'd be really curious to know what you're doing now as far as if you're doing fecal tests, if you're doing kind of the standard rotational dewormers, um, you know, if you've done nothing and hopefully this will give you some insight about where to start. So we'll see you in the comments. <laughs>